I have always wondered about the two final pieces from the children's album, In Church and the Organ Grinder. What is their place? If you think about the cycle as representing a child's busy day, by the time we get to the final two pieces, the day is over and the child is asleep. It is only if you think about the album as describing a man's life that there is a place for these two works, an extremely important and meaningful place. We have to remember that at the time of writing the children's album, Tchaikovsky was going through a very difficult period in his life. His very short marriage had failed and he had moved to Europe to lick his wounds, to try to find himself and to try to understand what his future was going to be. He had demons to fight, but it didn't seem like he was able to win in that particular struggle. So these last two pieces represent sort of the two possible outcomes of the struggle. In church is hope, redemption, absolution. The organ grinder is something different altogether. For us right now, we have probably never seen the mechanical organ or the hurdy-gurdy. But during Tchaikovsky's time, they were seen on the streets. There would be a mendicant, a, a beggar, playing the instrument, just, just twisting the handle so that the music would come out, um, perhaps with a monkey, that is a very common image, and um, ask for money. The mechanical organ is not a musical instrument in the sense in which we understand it. We don't make music on it. There is a melody which is preset. There is a certain futility to it. Nothing ever happens. The beggar is destined to play the same song over and over. This is the opposite of redemption, isn't it? So the order of the pieces is very important. In Tchaikovsky's original manuscript, we have in church followed by the organ grinder. Not a happy end. In the first edition, and in many editions since then, the order is reversed. The organ grinder comes first, but the absolution, the hope, the joy of in church does win. And we end with that. So it is up to each performer to decide in what order to play the pieces and what to think about. In any case, understanding the, the meaning of the pieces certainly enriches our interpretation and makes practicing them so much more enjoyable and fun. For me, the original order makes a great deal more sense knowing what we know about Tchaikovsky and his life. So let's talk about these pieces in the original order. So we're going to start with in church. Pedagogically, the central challenge of in church is playing simultaneous chords. As we had discussed so often in preceding movements of the album, to play simultaneous chords, you have to think about two things, bringing down the fingers at the exact same time, but also making a decision as to which of the voices or which of the fingers are louder than the others. The Russian name for in church actually is the choir singing or the choir sings in church. Um, so you have to try to create the image of that choir. I'm thinking that the sopranos and the basses in the choirs will be a great deal louder than the altos and the tenors. This is how a good choir sounds. So we have to be able to voice these four note chords on the outsides. You have to put a great deal more weight on the fingers um, that play on top in the right or on the bottom in the left. without lifting the fingers high up. So when we have repeated ease in the bass, we can allow our finger to come only about half
halfway up instead of all the way up. And there is this wonderful point inside the key bed which will allow us to depress the key again without letting it come all the way up. This creates a marvelous effect that sounds like you have pedal down, which I assure you I did not. And it creates absolute continuity in the sound, the way a choir would sound or the way an organ would sound. So you cannot do that on upright pianos, only on very well regulated grand pianos, but what fun to try. The question of rubato is always very important when playing pieces from the Romantic period. You have to decide whether pulling or pushing of time will contribute to painting the picture you're painting or hinder it. Since we are describing a scene of a choir singing in church, I think rubato is very much out of place. I cannot imagine a choir doing any kind of pushing and pulling. However, taking breaths between phrases would actually contribute to the picture a lot, wouldn't it? final challenge in, in church is to get extremely quiet in the ending where we have a pianissimo, two pianos, with a diminuendo leading to a pianissimo or, or three pianos. Some of my transfer students are opposed to using the left pedal. Somehow they've been told that it's a cheat of some kind. Please don't think that. The left pedal does so very much on the modern piano. It doesn't only make things more quiet, it also cuts in half or more the resonance of the strings. It makes a sound that isn't just quieter, but more matte or more pale. So in other words, we seem to be fading out, moving away from the church. In the context of the symbolic meaning which we're talking about, it almost sounds like salvation is elusive and not to be found. The organ grinder is basically a waltz with a sentimental melody, which must have been some kind of a popular tune, or Tchaikovsky's imitation of a popular tune, and the usual waltz accompaniment with a bass note and two chords. As in all accompaniments like that, we have to worry a great deal about playing the chords very quietly so that they don't overwhelm the melody and we don't get something like this. It is a very good idea to practice the left hand by itself to make sure that the chords are very close to the keys and very quiet indeed. And of course, the melody has to sing. As usual, when we're talking about creating a beautiful cantabile sound, I recommend playing with flatter fingers rather than round ones and allowing the wrist to lead the hand towards the next note. In most cases where composers were pianists themselves, this is how they played and so this is how they composed. And if you allow the arm to move in the direction of the note, the hand will phrase without really any active additions from the performer. Turning my wrist towards the important note, 
I made it louder and special without adding any unnecessary robot. In the second half of the piece, the texture becomes more complicated, as now there is something of another melody in the bass, and there are eighth notes in the middle of the texture, which present the usual problems of accompanying notes in the middle of the texture, in that they have to be very quiet. Ideally, you continue to play the top line with a very free wrist moving in the direction of the melody while keeping the inside notes extremely quiet. This is actually not an easy task, especially since Tchaikovsky seems to be slightly unclear here about how many fingers a person actually has. And he writes down legato, but it's not really possible. And you have to be able to glide your finger from one melody note to another without a true legato, creating something like a virtual legato with some combination of very smooth gesture and the pedal. In fact, it is very important to avoid any kind of a rubato in this piece. Remember, we're trying to paint a picture of a mechanical organ. It works just by the handle going around. No rubato is possible. Of course, we cannot play completely mechanically, and we must take some sorts of breaths between phrases. But the music is already sentimental. I don't think it would make sense to play it any more sentimentally than that, or at least with any more sentiment than that. Because remember, we're painting a picture of a piece that goes on of its own volition without any input from the performer which cannot be changed, cannot be influenced. This piece is all about the acceptance of one's fate.